Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I'm Gargi Rao. Our top story, the Prime Minister has called a meeting of the Council of Ministers tomorrow morning on Sunday at 10.30. Also ahead of the budget session, the government has convened an all-party meeting of all floor leaders on the 30th of January at 12 noon. Uh, this ahead of the uh, first of the budget that will be presented. And remember, this is the last uh, budget to be presented by the government ahead of the 2024 election. Let's go across to Himanshu now uh, for more Himanshu, give us more details. Uh, well, the Prime Minister has called a Council of Ministers meeting, and normally the Council of Minister Ministers meeting is held every month, at least once, in which important government policies are reviewed. Uh, and at the same time, a decision has also been taken to call all the floor leaders of uh, important political parties for an all-party meeting. That meeting will be held in uh, Parliament Library on 30th January just a day ahead of the start of the budget session. And remember, this has been part of a larger exercise that government has always initiated before a parliament session in which the opposition leaders are given an opportunity to submit the issues and the agenda and the demands that they have in terms of the issues they want to raise, the kind of discussions they want. And this also gives an opportunity to the government to put forth its own agenda for the budget session and uh, put it before the opposition leaders. So uh, 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 an effort, in fact, to create a kind of a, a consensus on important issues that needs to be deliberated on. And also the government also outlines its legislative uh, business that it wishes to take. Uh, because remember, budget session is a fairly long session. It's held in two parts. The budget is coming up on 1st Feb. Uh, so clearly, our president's address is also there. So these are two crucial meetings. And clearly, government has, in fact, started preparing uh, for a very important budget session, Kagi. All right, uh, Hibanshu, thanks so much for joining us uh, with those details. In other news now, two Indian Air Force fighter jets, a Sukhoi a Su-30 and a Mirage 2000, crashed today during a training exercise resulting in the death of one of the pilots. Uh, two other pilots are in hospital. Uh, both the fighter jets had taken off from the Gwalior Air Force Base. The Air Force tweeted the IF deeply regrets to inform that Wing Commander Hanumanth Rao Sarthi suffered fatal injuries during the accident. All air warriors and the fraternity stand strongly with the bereaved family. The Air Force has launched a probe to examine if a mid-air collision led to the crash. Wreckage of an IAF fighter, one of two that went down this morning in a training operation that went horribly wrong. Both the Mirage 2000 and the Sukhoi 30 had taken off from the nearby Gwalior Air Base. The wreckage of one of the fighters was found in Morena and MP, while remains of the other jet was located in the adjoining district of Bharatpur in Rajasthan. While the cause of the accident is still unclear, a mid-air collision between the two fighters has not been ruled out. In a statement, the Indian Air Force says, two fighter aircraft with the IF were involved in an accident near Gwalior today morning. The aircraft were on a routine operational flying training mission. One of the three pilots involved sustained fatal injuries. An inquiry has been ordered to determine the cause of the accident. Aircraft को लेकर पहचान करने में ये अथॉरिटी ही सक्षम है। हमारे स्तर से जो प्राथमिकता वो ये थी कि किसी प्रकार के जानों माल का नुकसान हो चुके आसपास मकान थे, लेकिन उससे काफी दूर ये गिरा है और जो हमने अपने लेवल पे जो उपकरण से सिविल डिफेंस की पूरी टीम है या एसडीआर को भी बुला रखा है, उससे रेस्क्यू जाज में ऊपर आग लगा रही थी हॉस्पिटल में तो उसमें फिर चलते चलते हम झुकते हुए आए थे तो उसमें जंगल में आग गिर गया एकदम आग लगती हुई जा रही थी एक आगे निकल गया था फिर बाद में ये पता लगा कि ये एक यहां टकराने से दोनों प्लेन टकराने से यहां एक गिर पड़ा बोथ द मिराज 2000 एंड द सुकोय 30 आर फ्रंट लाइन फाइटर्स ऑफ द इंडियन एयर फोर्स एंड हैव अ गुड सेफ्टी रिकॉर्ड द आईएफ विल बी लुकिंग क्लोजली एट जस्ट व्हाट वेंट रॉन्ग with Anurag Dwari, Vishnu Shom for NDTV. In other news, despite a warning against public screening of the controversial BBC documentary about Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a group of students at Mumbai's Tata Institute of Social Sciences gathered and watched it on laptops and phones. 
The institute had ad issued advisories to the students and the management of its branches besides the main one uh, campus in Mumbai against any such mass event, but not heeding that advisory and would... Uh, would uh, be dealt with strictly according to the rules is what uh, the warning was to the students. But still, they went ahead earlier outside the campus, ABVP and uh, Bharatiya Janata Party's youth uh, wing, uh, student and youth groups affiliated with the BJP and RSS held protests against the screening, uh, finally calling it off after getting, uh, 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 after getting assurances from the police. Well, let's go across to Sohit now. For more and Sohit, uh, you had the protest earlier on, but despite that and despite two advisories at least being issued, the students went ahead. There was not, you know, some kind of proper screening, but they watched it on their laptops in, in large groups. Absolutely, Gargi. In fact, there were around 200 students uh, uh, from the uh, Tata Institute of Social Science, the TIS, uh, which is in Mumbai. They watched the BBC documentary and uh, this uh, happened. In, uh, they screened this on nine laptops inside the test campus which is present in the suburban eastern suburbs of Mumbai and this happened amid uh, tight police security and there were multiple warnings in fact that was given by the institute authorities but despite that uh, these students uh, did watch the uh, documentary while there was no public screening of the movie uh, the uh, students did gather inside the campus and watched it on their laptops and cell phones uh, when we tried to speak to the administration of the Tata Institute of Social Science they said uh, that uh, they did not provide any facilities for the same. But despite that, the students did watch it. And the call to screen the movie in the campus was taken by the Progressive Students, uh, students Forum, the PSF, uh, which is a student's collective present inside the uh, test itself. In fact, they had asked for the permission, but the permission was denied by the test authorities. The BJP Yuva Morcha as well as the ABVP did protest throughout the day outside the test campus demanding that this should not happen. In fact, Mumbai BJP President Archie Shelar had also written and said that I warn the test authorities to not let them play this inside the uh, test administration as well as the test campus because it is not allowed. But despite that, uh, the uh, movie was played. However, the official protests say that you cannot call it public screening as the institute did not provide any facilities for the same. But the students did watch this on around nine laptops and several cell phones and around 200 students of the premier Tata Institute of Social Science did watch the BBC documentary inside the TIS campus. All right, uh, Sohi, thanks so much for joining us with those details. The gardens at the president's official home, Rashtrapati Bhavan, have been given a common name now as part of the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav celebrations. The old road sign that said Mughal Gardens was removed and taken away. There are three gardens in the Rashtrapati Bhavan inspired by Mughal and Persian gardens. An official statement said that on the occasion of celebrations of the 75th year, uh, years of 75 years of independence as Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, the president of India has given a common name to the Rashtrapati Bhavan gardens as Amrit. Udyan. Uh, Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan welcoming the move tweeted this new name not only shreds yet another symbol of colonial relic but also reflects India's aspirations for the Amrit Kal. During the term of former presidents Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam and Sri Ramnath Kovind, several more gardens were added and developed. On the occasion of the celebrations of 75 years of independence as the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa, the President of India is pleased to give a common name to the Rashtrapati Bhavan Gardens as the Amrit Udyan. And political news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in pole-bound Rajasthan today for Dev Narayan Jayanti, while Home Minister Amit Shah held a rally on a visit to pole-bound Karnataka. In fact, it was the second time that Amit Shah held, was in Karnataka in a month's time where he held a roadshow. Both states will see elections later this year. Now, in Rajasthan, with 10 months to go for the crucial assembly elections, the two main contenders in the state, BJP and Congress, can be seen ramping up the outreach to electorally significant Gujar community in the state. While the Prime Minister visited Rajasthan's Bhilwada on the 1111th birth anniversary of Bhagwan Dev Narayan, a folk deity revered by the Gujar community, Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot declared a state holiday on a Saturday ahead of the Prime Minister's visit to honour the deity. 
शुक्ल पक्ष की छठी तिथि को प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इन राजस्थान इन अ रीजन सिग्निफिकेंट टू द गुजर कम्युनिटी एंड एट द फंक्शन एड्रेसिंग द क्राउड इन एन आउट रीच अहेड ऑफ असेंबली इलेक्शन ट्वेंटी भगवान देव नारायण का अवतरण कमल पर हुआ था और हम तो वो लोग हैं जो पैदाइशी कमल्स के साथ हुई है द गुजर कम्युनिटी अबाउट नाइन टू इलेवन परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन आर नाउ इलेक्टोरली सिग्निफिकेंट इन द लास्ट इलेक्शन नॉट अ सिंगल गुजर कैंडिडेट वन फ्रॉम द बीजेपी द गुजर्स वोटेड एन मैस फॉर द कांग्रेस होपिंग सचिन पायलट वुड बिकम चीफ मिनिस्टर सचिन पायलट को ये नहीं बनाते सीएम तो सारे जनता बीजेपी में जाएगी सब लोग ने ऐसे नहीं बोला है उन्होंने कहा है कि नहीं बोला लेकिन वो है ही है ना आज आज हर आदमी को युवा चाहिए और युवा को मौका दे नहीं रही सरकार तो फिर सचिन को तो बनाना ही चाहिए ना मैडम बट डिस्पाइट द डिस इंटमेंट इट्स नॉट अ गिवन दैट द गुजर वोट विल शिफ्ट टू द बीजेपी आरक्षण का अभी हमारे नवी सूची में नहीं डला है वो भी हमारा मुद्दा था लेकिन आपको आरक्षण तो मिल रहा है चार परसेंट मिल रहा है लेकिन आरक्षण वो नवी स्थायी नहीं है मैम स्थायी कभी भी स्थायी है वो हमारी केंद्र से मांग थी कि उसको नवी सूची में सूची में डालकर उसको स्थायी करे बस ये मांग थी और ये गुजर रेजिमेंट की भी मांग थी मोदी जी से हमारी प्रथम मांग थी इस दिस कम्युनिटी सिग्निफिकेंट वोट बैंक इम्पैक्टिंग फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी सीट आर दे विलिंग टू बाइट द बुलेट वेल वील हैव टू वेट for a bit to see how the caste arithmetic pans out at mala seri dungar with camera person kanan patra harsha kumari singh for ndtv pdp chief mehbooba mufti today joined congress's rahul gandhi led bharat jodo yatra rahul resumed his march under high security cover from avantipura in jammu and kashmir also congress general secretary and his sister priyanka gandhi vadra also joined the yatra today in avantipura nazir reports Rahul Gandhi paying homage to CRPF jawans as Bharat Jodo Yatra passes through Lethpura the site of a major suicide attack in February 2019 in which 40 CRPF personnel were killed We are at Lethpura Pulwama the site of 2019 bombing in which 40 CRPF personnel were killed This was actually a bastion of separatism this area and today large number of people from this village have come out to be part of bharat jodo yatra so this place of yahi lethpura ke hai lethpura hai lethpura to kabhi yahan dhamake hue the yahan aaj itne log ha bilkul yahi yahan chadai pe hua tha to aaj us din dhamake aur aayush de bharat joda mein jodo mein shirkat kar rahe hain aap log ye kya itni farak kyu aayi हाँ बहुत आया बहुत आया फर्क आया है हाँ क्यों आया ऐसा फर्क पता नहीं तो आज का ऐसी सूरत हाल है कि बदल गए बदल गया बदल गया बदल गया बदल गया राहुल गांधी वॉज ज्वाइन बाय महबूबा मुफ्ती हर मदर एंड डॉटर व्हेन द यात्रा रिज्यूम्ड फ्रॉम अवंतीपुरा टुडे लेटर प्रियंका गांधी ऑल्सो ज्वाइन इन Large crowds turned up as the yatra proceeded through Kashmir's saffron fields. Police say a three-tier security cover is being provided to the yatra following an alleged security fiasco on Friday, which the Congress has described as serious lapse in Rahul Gandhi's security. हम लोग three-tier protection दे रहे हैं और पूरा security regime इंतजाम है यात्रा ठीक से चल रही है. कल कोई सिक्योरिटी लेफ्ट कुछ नहीं हुआ था बिल्कुल बहुत सारे पीपी जो है पैदल मार्च का फी किए पूरा टुमारो इज द लास्ट डे ऑफ द भारत जोड़ो यात्रा एज इट एंटर्स श्रीनगर सिटी एंड कलमिनेट्स एट नेहरू पार्क अलोंग द डल लेक विद नजीर मसूदी उसामा शाह फॉर एनडीटीवी News from the North East now and in Meghalaya ahead of the crucial polls an interesting game of musical chairs is on as many as 20 MLAs of the 60 member assembly have so far switched allegiance Ratnadeep Chaudhary reports The Meghalaya Chief Electoral Officer's office has been holding several musical shows like this one to inspire voters to vote ethically in next month's state polls But for politicians it's a game of musical chairs 
Of the total 60 legislators in the state, a third have resigned and joined other parties in the past couple of months. Last year, 12 Congress MLAs in Meghalaya joined the TMC, led by former Chief Minister Mukul Sangma, making TMC the main opposition party overnight. But over the past one month, the exits and entries have become an epidemic. One Nationalist Congress Party leader joined Congress. Two National People's Party leaders joined BJP. One National People's Party leader joined TMC. One TMC leader joined the BJP. One TMC leader joined United Democratic Party. Two TMC leaders joined the National People's Party. One independent leader joined the BJP. Two People's Democratic Front leaders joined the National People's Party. Three suspended Congress leaders joined the National People's Party. Two suspended Congress leaders joined United Democratic Party. One KHNAM leader joined Voice of the People Party. One HSPDP leader joined National People's Party. One HSPDP leader joined United Democratic Party. One independent leader joined United Democratic Party. Prominent Meghalaya leaders like four-time independent MLA Samuel Sangma joined the BJP. The longest serving woman legislator and former Congress Minister Dr. Amparin Lingdo joined the NPP. Three-time MLA and Sharad Pawar's NCP's state president Saling Sangma joined the Congress. And cabinet minister Rennington Lingdo joined the UDP from HSPDP. The NPP against all odds has led this coalition. In its leadership in this coalition, it has brought out some very productive schemes and policies in the interest of the people and the state of Meghalaya in general. Now, when you see that there are so many positives, we decided, along with a consultation, extensive consultation with the people of my constituency. We could see that if we really want to strengthen regional party in the state of Meghalaya, there is no option. UDP is the only option which we think it is possible to strengthen regional party in the state of Meghalaya. So that was the main reason I have opted to join UDP, to work with UDP, because I still want to respect the call of the people to strengthen regional party in the state of Meghalaya. Now NCP had, I just had only one and then I've been talking about the NCP and trying to, you know, make their presence felt every now and then. And till the last breath I have already talked about the NCP, right? So it's not about anything, it's not about the board bank, this and that. It's about me, myself and my people, okay? And then with the Congress, at least we can work together. And the objective of joining the Congress is for the people, not for me. One TMC leader left the party after getting a ticket to stay away from mudslinging politics, he says. The reason is that uh, we just want to refrain ourselves from mudslinging politics and we want to promote constructive politics and we have full faith and confidence on ourselves. Meghalaya's politics is as unpredictable as its weather and perhaps the roots of this uncertainty lies in the political history of the state. Since the 70s, only once did any political party achieve absolute majority in the state polls. Until now, only three chief ministers have been able to complete full term in office. Otherwise, hung assembly and political switchovers have been the main feature of Meghalaya politics and it seems this time is no difference. With Panchali Bhattacharjian Shilong in Guwahati, Ratnadeep Chaudhary, Findy TV.